Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about enumerating Active Directory using RPC Client. To get the most out of this video and this lab, you will need to have completed the previous lab on brute forcing the SMB password from Active Directory. Make sure you complete or watch that video before attempting anything in this presentation. This lab requires that you have a virtual install of Kali Linux, updated and upgraded, and a virtual install of Server 2012, 2016, or Server 2019 running Active Directory. Lastly, you'll need to ensure that you have connectivity between your attack machine and your target machine before attempting this lab. The easiest way for us to connect to our target machine is to use an authentication file. This authentication file contains three values, the username, the password, and the name of the domain. As always, I like to create myself a working directory. So I have a folder on my desktop called RPC. So you're going to need to create a working directory. And inside that working directory, we're going to place this authentication file with the three values that we need to connect to our target machine. So to begin with, I'm just going to right click anywhere on my desktop and I'm going to select from the context menu, create a folder. I'm going to call that folder RPC. Here's my folder. I'm going to open the folder and inside the folder, I'm going to create a new text file. So I can just right click inside this right window anywhere and from the context menu, select create document empty file. I'm then going to call that file rpc.txt. Once I have the file created, I'm just going to double click it. And now you can see the three values that I have inside of my authentication file. As I previously stated, everyone needs to complete the previous lab, brute forcing the SMB password from Active Directory so that they can get their password from their target machine. And let's go ahead and close out our authentication file. Let's close out our working directory. Back to my desktop, I'm going to find my working directory, right click on it, and from the context menu, I'm going to select open terminal here. So I now have the terminal opened up inside of my working directory. So let's go ahead and go to edit, and we're going to zoom in and we'll do that again and one more time. Now to use an authentication file with the RPC client, I just have to type in RCP client space dash capital letter A space followed by the name of the authentication file followed by the IP address of the target. If the two targets are on the same network and they have connectivity, you should not have an issue. If you get an error saying that the NT status host was unreachable, that just means that you do not have connectivity and you need to fix it. Once you have fixed the connectivity error, just come back up, rerun the command, and you'll notice that you now have the RPC client prompt. There are way too many commands available under RCP client to go over in this short presentation, but we're going to go over some of them. If you would like to see all of the commands that are available at the prompt, just type in help. And you can scroll through all the different commands that are available with your RCP client. If you would like to return to the top of your terminal, you can use control the letter L. Control plus the letter L, and that will return you to the top of your screen. The serve info command can be used to gather information about the operating system and other details about the server that we're currently attached to. So at the prompt, I've typed in serve info. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it gives us some information such as the IP address, the platform ID, the OS version. Now the OS version in this case tells us that it's version 10. That's either going to be a Windows 10 machine or a Server 2016 machine. It also tells you that the machine is currently running as a primary domain controller and that its name is DC1. To get back to the top of your screen, you can type in Control L. 
So now that we have our server information, we can move on to enumerating the domain users. To do this, at the prompt, you can use the following command, enum dom users. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back with the current list of domain users that are currently available up inside of Active Directory. We can now move on to enumerating the groups that are currently available up inside of Active Directory. And this is something we can use to best help determine how we're going to elevate our privileges later on. So at the prompt, I typed in enum dom groups. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you can now see all the groups that are currently listed up inside of Active Directory. When enumerating the users and the groups, we are given the RID for each item. Now, if you would like to see the SID, you can use the lookup names command. I'm now going to look up the SID that is assigned to the administrator's group using the lookup names command. So at the prompt, I've typed in lookup name space, the name of the group. In this case, it's administrators. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it gives me the SID for that particular group. Now, another thing that we can do is look up the SID for a particular user. So again, I've typed in lookup name space, the name of the user. In this case, I want the SID for the administrator. Go ahead and hit enter and it comes back with that information as well. So now that we have enumerated the users and the groups, we can further look inside of the group to determine, for instance, how many members does the group have. So at the prompt, I've typed in query group space. Now I have to follow that up with the RID number. So we know that 0x200 is the RID for the administrators group. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it tells us that the group name is Domain Admins. It is the designated administrators of the domain. The group attribute is 7 and it has currently 2 members. And we can do the same for a particular user in the domain. So in this example, I want to find out what is going on with this particular user named C. Cranebill. And I want to know what his group membership is and if there's anything else that would be useful that can be found in the properties of his user account. So at the prompt, I just typed in query user space, followed by the name of the domain user. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And if we look down here, you'll see that in the description, we find his password. Well, that's very useful. And we also see that he's also a member of the group with a RID number of 0x200. Now, what group is that? Well, we know that that's the administrators group. So that's the second member of the administrators group for this domain. And we now have his username and we have his password. Now, currently I'm logged on as administrator to the domain. That's how I'm connected. Those were the authentication credentials that I used when I first launched the RPC client. Now to see what privileges I have as the administrator or any other user, I can type in the following command at the prompt, enum privs. I'm now going to go ahead and hit enter. And you can see all the different privileges that this administrative user has. Now with the RPC client, we can also create a domain user once we're connected. Of course, you're going to have to have the privileges to do so, but we do. So at the prompt, I can type in create dom user space followed by the name of this new user I want to create. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Comes back to the prompt, letting us know that that command completed successfully. We next need to set the password for our new user. To do this, I can use the set user info to command. So at the prompt, I've typed in set user info to space the name of the new user that we just created space 24 which is the password level that we're using for this domain give it a space followed by the password i want this user to use hit enter and it comes back to the prompt letting us know that that command completed successfully now to see if that new user is actually present up inside of active directory we can back up and use the enum dom users command one more time 
I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that we have our new user, bad actor, is present up inside of Active Directory. We are unable to reset the password for anyone who has an admin account that equals one. That would be the domain administrators. But we can change the password for a user that is not a domain administrator that is part of the domain admins. So in this case, I've typed in set user info to space a normal user, C. Cranbill, who we know is also a member of the domain admins. Give it a space, use the password level, give it a space, type in his new password, and we're going to hit enter. And it comes back to the prompt, letting us know that that command completed successfully. The list of commands for enumerating a remote target running as a domain controller using the RPC client is quite extensive. We've gone over some of the most useful enumerating commands that are available with this particular tool. But how do you, as a network administrator, detect a bad SMB connection to your network? Let's take a look at how we do that. So I'm now going to portray myself as being the network administrator, and I'm currently looking at my server 2016 domain controller. And just out of curiosity, I want to know, are there any SMB connections currently going on with this domain controller? Now to do this, I'm just going to go to the command prompt. So at the search bar, I'm just going to type in CMD. I'm going to right click. I'm going to run as administrator. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just type in net session. I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that we do have a connection from an unknown source with an IP of 10.0.2.15 who is currently connected as the administrator. And I know that's not me. So how can I get this attacker off of my network? Well, at the prompt, I can just type in net space session space whack whack or backslash backslash 10.0.2.15 space forward slash del for delete. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it says that the session from 10.0.215 has open files. Do you want to continue this operation? I'll say yes, I do by typing in a Y. And I'll hit enter. And it says the command completed successfully. So let's wander on back over to our Kali machine where I'm once again the hacker. So I'll bring up any command here. And I'll try to run it. And it's going to come back and it's going to tell you that the connection was disconnected. Not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and just reconnect. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to right click on my folder one more time. Open terminal here. Use my up arrow. Let's go ahead and improve the font size. And I'll go ahead and reconnect. And I can once again type in SRV info, see if I do have a connection. And it comes back, letting me know that I'm once again connected. So now we're going to go back on over to the server 2016 machine. And let's take a look at what's going on over there. So we know that. The attacker can just reconnect once his session is deleted. So how do I, as the network administrator, stop that individual from being able to reconnect? So I know as the network administrator, I killed that bad session from that particular attacker. But if I do the net session command again, I see that he's back. So you're probably thinking, why don't you just block port 445? Well, if I do that, then I won't be able to have any legit connections either. So that's not really an option. But what I can do is I can run a script or a command in a loop that will continuously kick off this particular attacker using his IP address every one second. So he's going to be able to connect for one second, but he'll be kicked off as soon as he does reconnect. All right, so currently I am connected as the attacker. And at the command prompt here on my server 2016 machine, I typed in the for command, giving it a space, forward slash L, which stands for loop. And every time I have an incoming connection and it creates a session, I'm going to run the net session command and do the delete one more time. And then I'm going to do a ping. 
and when the attacker reconnects or attempts to connect in one second, the process repeats itself. So let's see how that works. So I'm at the prompt here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And the connection has been kicked off. Now if I go back on over here to my Kali machine, you can see that I'm not going to be able to have much luck reconnecting. So in this short video presentation, you learned how to use the RPC client to enumerate a wide range of information using the SMB and RPC channels inside of a domain. This lab can serve as a reference for red team activists for attacking and enumerating the domain. Still, it can also be helpful for the blue team to understand and test the measures applied on the domain to protect the network and its users. So if you got questions or if you got concerns about anything that was presented to you in this short video presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.